Welcome to part two of Understanding Windows Server 2012. Now in part one, we kind of laid out all the steps that we went through in the 80s and 90s to get to where we are with a product like Windows Server 2012. And here in part two, we're going to talk about how Windows Server 2012 fits into that scenario. Because as our larger, more congested local area networks began to be a problem, the only answer was to add more servers. We needed more servers handling the workload, and then a better idea came along. What if we dedicate tasks to certain servers? And that's exactly what happened. Some servers take care of network services like naming issues like DNS, addressing issues for IP addresses and other things like DHCP, file organization, which is really how we got here to start with. Different servers can handle client login and security and all kinds of other functions that we need on our networks. Now, understand that Windows Server targets these very needs on our networks. It was designed from the ground up for large-scale multi-server networks. The servers can be designated to perform certain functions, and we call those roles and features, and we'll talk about those a lot as we move through the course here. And security in the Windows Server world is provided by a set of functionalities that we know as Active Directory. Now, Active Directory lets us create security domains so that a user from a client machine almost anywhere can come across the network and log in to our security domain. A domain is just a collection of computers that can share data in a secure manner. It also manages the logins on these. And so when a user tries to log in, what steps do we have to go through to make sure that they are who we think they are and they have appropriate access and so forth. And then, of course, we have the management of the files and folders. And we also picked up file maintenance and simplification for clients. The client doesn't really have to understand anything about what's going on in the back end. All they have to know how to do is log in, go to their particular resources on the network, and work, and then log out. Now, Windows Server 2012 also targets remote and branch office functions because these things are part of the real world. And they've kind of been overlooked in the past, and you just had to figure out your own option. And a lot of times, security took a hit, and that's being solved more and more in Windows Server. Remote client connectivity is another big one with Internet technologies, wide area networks now. There's a lot of remote connection. Security is a major concern there. Performance is a concern. And then there's backup and restore. We always have to make sure that we're protecting the data that we're storing on our servers. Then monitoring becomes a problem. When we have more and more servers, how do we know which ones are sick, which ones are doing okay, which ones are starting to be overloaded? And Windows Server takes care of that. And there's a lot more functions that you'll see, but that's kind of how we got here. And as you can see in Windows Server 2012, these are the technologies you need to be aware of to get past the 70-410 exam.